Welcome back to the Deepen State. I'm Nick Hawks. This is presented by Gold Hawks. On today's episode, we have Alessandro DiCarli, co-founder over at Accurast. This episode is sponsored by Gold Hawks and Associates, the most experienced Deepen consultancy in the space. We help projects develop strategy, messaging, and token incentives. We'll have a little bit more on us later in the show. Before we get started, make sure you hit the like, subscribe, smash the bell, all those things that help us bring great guests like Alessandro to you. Alessandro, thanks so much for making the time and coming on. How are you doing? Yeah, very good. Thanks, and thanks for having me. Yeah, heck yeah. So let's start off with a little bit of background on you before we get to Accurast is how did you come to be the co-founder of this company? What was your background? Yeah, so my background is actually very technical. I uh, co-founded another company 14 years back uh, that was focused in the mobile security space, servicing some of the largest um, institutions worldwide uh, here in Switzerland and also Europe, but also overseas, uh, companies like Jeffries, uh, Northrop Grumman, and so on and so forth. And uh, somewhere in 2015, actually, I had a friend that was constantly nagging me about Bitcoin and that I should do something uh, there, apply my knowledge in mobile security also there. So I did, and I kind of got orange peeled. Um, I started the first project in 2015, uh, basically working on what today is known as the Lightning Network. And um, yeah, I have been in the space ever since. Uh, about three years ago, I realized that there is a way to reutilize mobile devices for their uh, secure element um, in there to provide a verifiable compute. And that's basically the start of Accurus, really. Um, okay, so uh, you're combining the exposure to basically cryptocurrency with your own history and mobile security and saying, oh, you had this realization. And then here's what I could do with it. Okay, cool. That that makes a ton of sense. So walk me into uh, what Accurist does and what the what the plans are. Yeah, sure. So you see, if you take a look at uh, decentralized compute uh, nowadays, um, one thing that I believe uh, many of the projects are missing is that if you try to actually compete uh, against Google, Amazon, and uh, Microsoft in a uh, space that they basically have completely monopolized because they're dominating the cloud space uh, with more than 60% uh, market share with these companies alone, um, is that if you want to start challenging them, you cannot even think for a split second you would be able to do so by utilizing the same kind of servers that they do. Uh, because they have the better hardware suppliers that, than you do, they have the better economies of scale, and you're just left with the decentralization overhead. And that's basically where Accurist, um, or where the mobile device comes into play at Accurist, right? Because uh, these little devices have grown to massive performance. Um, I mean, nowadays, they're little supercomputers that we're carrying around. They have the Crazy, best silicon right? out there, right? Yeah, yeah. And the other thing is, Sometimes we just uh, put them in the drawer if we no longer use them and forget about it. And so this ends up being a huge underutilized uh, resource that uh, you can now put to work with accuracy. Okay, so let's see. We can talk about kind of exactly how it works in a second, but maybe let's start off with kind of how is this a, a deep in? This is a question that gets asked of all these companies now that are slapping deep in on their name for the, they have some kind of touch point with physical, but is there, is there any requirement that these phones be in certain locations around the world or does that matter? Could I have 30 phones in my closet just kind of hooked in and, and crushing what's the, what's like the physical, maybe location dependent requirement of this, if any. So, Really on the Accurus network, um, anyone can come and onboard their spare phones. Mm -hmm. um, we don't really care where it is located, uh, nor how it's connected to the internet. So this can be via cellular or uh, your Wi-Fi connection. Okay. Uh, so yeah, by all means, you can have 30 devices uh, in your drawer and then just hook them up. Um, however, uh, the other side of the equation, so the people that are then actually utilizing that compute um, will see those properties. So it's then up to them to say which properties are desirable and which are not. Um, and this generates a market around the uh, devices. This means that if uh, you, let's say, are in a specific location and someone is really trying to um, collect data uh, utilizing that specific location. So they would select you. Uh, maybe they're more willing to pay than um, if someone has uh, a device in a nearby location or elsewhere. 
Okay. So what is a, a customer of Vacuous looks like? I can see the provider side. I can just pull, I can probably pull a couple phones out of my drawer right now and, and fire them up and figure it out. But what does it look like from the, the buyer side? So what developers receive on the buyer side of Acurus is basically a interface that is very, very similar to what uh, AWS Lambda provides you. So it's a serverless uh, cloud um, compute uh, infrastructure that you, that you receive. And this really means like your creativity is what, what limits you. If uh, you have developed your application in Node.js, it's compatible out of the box with uh, Acurus and you can then just... Uh, yeah, run it uh, on Acuous. Um The use cases that we have at the moment are mostly coming as well from the Web3 space. Uh, so these are use cases like um, there is TZBTC, which is a wrapped Bitcoin uh, that allows retail to wrap and unwrap that token. So you can think of it like a WBTC, but where you can actually get to the actual BTC behind it because you can fully unwrap it uh, yourself. And that sort of automation has been uh, done entirely on Acurist, uh, showing the world basically how secure the whole system is because in this specific use case, for this specific client, it's securing more than 70 million uh, worth of Bitcoin. That's a lot of Bitcoin. It's a lot of Bitcoin. All right. Super cool. So that's a nice um, intro and kind of overview. Let's take a quick break to talk about today's sponsor, Gold Hawks and Associates. We're a deep in consultant firm helping projects with strategy, messaging, and token incentives. We run a blog for founders over at goldandhawks.com. Produce this show and most importantly, work with the core teams and communities of your favorite projects in the space to ensure tokenomics and incentives are fully aligned to build out some of the most badass physical infrastructure networks in the world. If your project needs help with any of these, check out goldandhawks.com. Okay, Alessandro, if we come back to this, we just hit this rep BTC piece, maybe step back and like, how big is the network right now? And what is the usage like right now? Yeah, so we have uh, been very, very lucky um, and also grateful for the community that is extremely active. Uh, by now we have more than 5,000 uh, compute units that are completely dedicated to the network. And these compute units are effectively mobile devices, and uh, most of them also have quite um, quite some power behind them. So eight cores, eight giga gig gigabytes of RAM is uh, not something that you find rarely, but kind of the standard, um, which then translates about uh, 40,000 cores, uh, 40 terabytes of, of RAM that yeah is there accessible for you to then um, run arbitrary computation on. Dang. Okay. And total kind of non-technical question. I'm imagining all that stuff is, is decentralized. Are there efficiency losses as you have your 5,000 units all over the world as they're kind of talking to each other? I'm imagining there's some kind of slowdown or, or efficiency losses there, or am I just missing that? And I, I don't understand at all how it works. So I could be totally wrong there. No, absolutely. I mean, what, what you're referring to is latency, right? And mm -hmm. There is just um, yeah, a physical property of uh, how fast light, uh, in the case of fiber optics, um, or also electricity can travel, right? Mm -hmm. um, and this means that, uh, of course, we're also affected by that. However, um, you can select yourself uh, which devices you're going to utilize. So basically, okay. if it is important for you to have a very, very low latency, you may be even able to find a device that is providing compute to you that is directly in the same ISP. So in that case, it's even playing in your favor because yeah. uh, you're basically sitting inside the exact same uh, internet service provider. Interesting. And if I look at the map right now, what does it look like as far as where it's distributed? Is it kind of just across the first world, pretty similar to the other Deepin projects, or do you guys have penetration into uh, the, rest, the rest of the world, the non-super connected well, world? Actually, it's growing very organically. Um, okay. It's uh, actually super interesting. I mean, of course, um, Europe has uh, uh, quite a good representation, but then also Africa, South America, and um, Southeast Asia has been uh, yeah, growing very, very uh, fast as well. So if you take a look at where these 5,000 devices are, um, it is actually very, very much uh, distributed uh, and basically on every continent uh, of the world so far. Uh, except for Antarctica, so I will get some phones down maybe, there. Maybe exactly. I'm <laughs> I'm actually thinking about that uh, as a marketing gag. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it's funny because I think 
some of the clients that Max and I have over at Golden Hawks have talked about sending us down to Antarctica. So I think there's going to be like a deep in, deep in South trip where uh, we go into the deep South and into Antarctica and set up a bunch of different, whatever, helium, weather XM, uh, ATOR, et cetera. And we should, we should throw some accuracy in that. Um, Absolutely. Package. Very happy to sponsor that. Very happy to sponsor that. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be fun. Okay, now tell me about this Rebellion uh, program that you guys have, have launched. So at the moment, we're in the phase that we want to uh, onboard as much computational power as possible. Um, because okay. like this, we then will have also a very nice offering for the developers utilizing uh, this compute power. And uh, the Rebellion program is basically a loyalty pl platform uh, that has some gamification where everyone can basically participate, uh, start referring people to the network, start onboarding own devices and start earning points. Um, that's the Rebellion program. We launched it just yesterday, so it's still very, very early for people uh, to join there. Um, and it has been yeah, showing a massive traction so far, uh, and we're happy to also see the impact of this podcast afterwards. Yeah, super. Well, we'll drop a uh, a link down in the description so people can jump into that. And I guess that brings us to close to the end of this thing is, I guess I can see who would participate as anyone with a spare phone. Does it matter if it's an iPhone or an Android? Does it matter if it's new and fancy or old and kind of maybe not as, as fast as you'd like? Like, do those things matter in terms of how much someone might earn on the token side? So. The state as it is right now, um, the only requirement that you have is that you have to dedicate the device. So it will be locked down and dedicated to the network um, and it needs to be an Android 12 device. Now, whether the device has a broken screen, broken uh, microphone, broken anything except for the actual compute unit, it doesn't matter. So we've seen people that basically are purchasing all these trade-in phones uh, for very, very cheap and are basically able to scale up massive uh, computational power. Um, the, this is the state as it is today. Mm -hmm. Now, what we have in the pipeline, uh, and we have not released it yet, um, is the manager application, which allows you to run it side by side on your everyday device. This means that if you have an Android phone, uh, again, after Android 12, um, you will be able to say, okay, Please do not utilize it uh, throughout the day when I need it for phone calls, uh, Netflix, and so on and so forth. But during the night while it's charging, I don't care. You can utilize that underutilized resource. And uh, iOS, of course, is on the roadmap. We already have a POC working and are asking it now for the first beta testers uh, to join as well. So as you can see, we are really trying to cover as many devices as possible because it will also allow us then to ultimately uh, unlock the true potential over these um, trading phones that are just lying around completely underused or not utilized at all. Now, is there any cap to how big this can get? Like if everybody in the world who has an extra phone plugs it in, does that somehow crash your system? Or are you able to scale and say like, no, if you put 7 billion devices on, we're ready to, ready to roll? <laughs> That is where the peer-to-peer -peer aspect of the whole system actually is very, very interesting because it really fully scales horizontally and the devices uh, talk uh, in a uh, very yeah, horizontal way with each other okay. uh, and interact that way. So, yeah, theoretically, there is no limit. Uh, the sky is the limit. And I think this makes it also uh, super exciting because it will mean that um, if we achieve the mission that we are now um, yeah, focusing on will become basically the largest cloud provider out there in terms of compute. You think Amazon's going to put up with that? They'll be like, ah, I would just let those guys do their thing. Dude, they are asking. limited. Be careful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are limited by locations, right? They they yeah. can bring up more data centers, but they will never be able to keep up with a fully crowdsourced decentralized network uh, of compute. Love it. That's a great hope. Okay. Well, where can people find more? What's the website, Twitter, all that stuff? Where can people find you? So I think the best resources um, are actually found on our main website, accurus.com. Uh, there you find also all the socials, um, Twitter accounts, Telegram accounts, Discord accounts. Um, and if you're interested in the Rebellion program, yeah, we'll share the link down below. I think that uh, is also a very good starting point. That should do it. Ripping, thanks so much for making time and coming on. Appreciate it, Alessandro. Thank you so much for the opportunity.